I recently got these two large nodules of opal on eBay and they essentially cost me nothing. People ask me all the time how I find good deals on eBay, so I'm going to show you in this video. So let's cut these two stones and since I essentially paid nothing for them, I'm going to give whatever comes out of this to you guys. I mean fair is fair, right? Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is grind around the edges of this thing and see what's under there. I'm cutting this dry because I can't wait two to six days for this stuff to dry out before moving to the next step. But it's okay though, I've got my heavy duty respirator on and my high speed exhaust fan. I mean the only people at risk here are my neighbors. But they're used to this, and what could possibly hurt them? We can't see much with this one because of the sand, but there's this one bright blue spot that looks really good. I'll just remove some of the sand from the rounded top of this stone. So let's look at the results. This one we see finger-like processes which indicate that if I go in at the tops of those fingertips, I'll get a honeycomb pattern. Nice, very bright color, lots of red. As you may recall, if we cut near the top of the fingers, we get a honeycomb pattern. But on the other end, the fingers get fat, so we get a blocky pattern, which many people actually like better than the honeycomb. The plan for this one, since it has a nice dome here and a relatively flat bottom, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to go around the periphery and see if that is part of it. Now with this one, it's a two-pronged attack. Do we have a prong around here, Sheila? Sheila? My name is Sheila, and I'm an opaholic. Thanks for that, Sheila. Two-pronged attack. We have a honeycomb pattern to expose, and two, we need to see the back of the stone to look for that fat finger pattern that I referred to before. And no, we're not talking about my fingers, we're talking about the opal. Okay, the mission to expose the fat finger side is complete. We see the fat finger pattern, but the opal is very dark and the overall look is not that great, in my opinion. Now we're working on specimen two, just getting the sand off and trying to expose as much as we can. Well, there's certainly not much to dislike about this. But unfortunately, a crack has appeared that extends to a pit of sand. In my experience, cracks in Ethiopian opal very often are associated with pockets of sand. I mean, this is a small crack and it doesn't go anywhere, but if I put it in water, the water will immediately get into the crack and extend it, and there's no way to know where a crack will go. It could go straight across. That's what I want, but cracks don't care about what I want. They do whatever they want. Sort of like the Terminator. But what about this sand pit? We need to see what it's all about too. Let's use the torch. Some transillumination. An illuminating moment in transillumination. I don't need no stinking transillumination. You can see it right there. Looks like a shark. Pretty huge finger of sand. It looks like one of those African termite mounds. So I did a little bit more grinding and I exposed the entire crack which turns the corner right there. I want to get rid of this crack, but if I put it in water, the crack will go all terminator on me. So I'm going to use some experimental opalology, cyanoacrylate. That's chemistry speak for superglue. Now superglue will work on cracks in Ethiopian opal. Let me show you. Colonel, it didn't work. That opal is still cracked, right? Wrong. If it's so cracked, why isn't it crumbling into a pile of opal shards? I use super glue to hold this thing together. The cracks are visible, but they won't come apart. Super glue will do that, but don't expect super glue to ever make cracks disappear. So before I saw off this crack, I'm going to put a tiny bit of super glue in it, and that should keep it from spreading when I cut it off with the trim saw. Ah, 
I marked it with marker because this part is coming off and the mark will come off with this small piece. The surgery was successful and you can see that we were able to get all of the tumor. So here are the two stones ready to get made into gems. They're nervous of course but at Pulitzer Opal we'll take good care of them. I promise. So I've decided to cut off the potch on one side to reveal the honeycomb pattern. If it goes well, we're going to make a double-sided cabochon out of this. The termite mound of sand and the crack left me with an odd shape, so I have to do one more cut. Well, I'm ready to do the final shaping on these two, and our double-sided stone is coming along nicely. Now, the first thing I notice is the price, $85, and add $12 shipping, that's $97. Now they don't give us the precise weight or the dimensions, but they have photos, so let's take a look at them. So let's see, we've got Australian Opal, 100 carats. Okay, let's see, the description clarifies things. It's 100 carats from Kubapedia, Australia. Kubopedia? Well, that's, that sounds like Wikipedia's little brother. Hey, Koob! Dad said for you to take out the garbage. He says you'll be a whiny baby until you learn how. I'm not a baby. So I think I'll bid about $70. Well, they accepted my offer, and I paid a total of $84, including taxes. What I saw in the parcel was this. This is dark-based Australian opal with splotches of nice color. I knew that I could make a nice cabochon that would be worth at least two to three hundred dollars with this one. So that essentially pays for the entire parcel. And the rest is essentially free. But what I really wanted from this parcel was this stuff. This is Ethiopian opal and the value of this stuff is between two and twelve dollars per carat. So that puts the value of the two stones between $270 and $1,600. I mentioned in my last video that I'd be taking a set of Baltic Abrasive Technology centered wheels on a test drive. Well, that's sort of what I did in this video, but I didn't follow the rules. The information says in big letters, I might add, don't use these wheels dry. Whoops. I used them dry in the video and they've worked great, but I won't be able to give a real assessment until I drive them wet lots of times. So you'll be seeing the test drives in my upcoming videos uh, if I ever see you again. I may not say anything about it, but I'll be testing anyway. I have some information about Baltic Abrasives Tech at the end of the video and also in the description. So check it out. In third place, a very bright but diminutive young opal named Rupert. But his friends know him as Jellybean. Fine stone for the right viewer. In second place, an attractive but modest opal named Pookie. And no, that's not a nickname. She's a restless woman who's looking for a new person in her life. In first place, a two-sided but not two-faced, pugnacious young lady named Scarlet. She's into thrills and wants desperately to impress you with her comb of honey. I hate to have to relinquish this stunning trio of opals, but I will be giving them away in my next video. Leave a comment and you've got a shot. 
And the winner of the 7.65 carat arrowhead is that crazy misanthrope. Well, that's another video in the can. Stand by for information about Baltic abrasive technologies. I will see you next time. Baltic Abrasive Technologies is a family-owned Lithuanian company with a very good reputation for their lapidary wheels. And based on that, I expect to be using these centered wheels for a long time. I'm very much impressed by the thickness of the abrasive layer, which is nearly twice the thickness of my previous wheels, as you can see. Here's their contact information.